Hello, and welcome to our study on No Limits, No Boundaries as we enter week three. I pray that the lesson from last week and the week one on knowing your identity in Christ and communing with our Creator were blessings for your life. I pray that Holy Spirit continued to reveal truth for you the last few weeks because today we will be talking about prioritizing prayer in our busy schedules prioritizing prayer in our busy schedules. So I will go ahead and ask you to grab your Bibles or your iPhones or your tablets or whatever it is that you use in order to retrieve the Word of God because we will have some scripture references to refer to. And thank you again for joining us on this week. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you right now just for being the mighty and wonderful God you are. We love you and we praise you and we come before your presence together today yearning and longing to hear what you have for us on this day as we open up your word dear god we ask that you open up our hearts so that we might receive what you have for us father we long for a closer communion and fellowship with you because we know that you have left your door to yourself and to your kingdom completely open so that we can come into your presence at any time use us father to your service and to you god we give all glory and all praise as it's an honor to be together once again in Jesus name amen amen during this time I see a lot of people wanting to be refreshed they are looking for freshness to come into their lives some of you may say like you may have friends that say this that they are looking for God to endow them with a fresh touch from heaven they're looking for more they're telling me that i'm thirsty and you may feel the same way i'm thirsty i'm i'm hungry for god i want more of god's presence i want to be friends with holy spirit i want more of his word i want to hear his voice with more clarity i want the benefits that come from walking in relationship with holy spirit and i would like to ask the question that many of you ask because you want to be more aware of god's presence in your life but how do you spend more time with God in the midst of your busy schedules? We all know how important it is to pray and to spend time with God and to soak in his presence. And, and we are reminded of that in a lot of the passages of scripture. But when I say soak in God's presence, I mean spending intimate time communing with God as we discussed in our last session. Prioritizing time for God is found in scripture repeatedly. Even in the 23rd Psalm, King David wrote of the shepherding heart of God who leads us into green pastures and restores our souls. The ne another scripture says in uh, Psalm 4 and 4, meditate within your heart on the bed and be still. In Matthew 11, 28 through 30, which is one of my favorites, it says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In Isaiah 40 and 31, it says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew strength. They shall mount up like wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Soaking in the presence of the Lord opens up the heart to divine romance and intimacy and allows the Lord to show us his love and allows us to fall in love with him over and over and over again and again. Kind of like a marriage, you know? I think about when a spouse for those of you who are married, when your spouse does something that's totally unexpected or they do something that you have not seen them do in many years, and you say to yourself, hmm, now that's what I married him for, or that's why he's the love of my life, or that's why she's the one I chose to marry. And I kind of think of it this way, kind of like when God's, I consider the Bible like God's love letter. And when you read it over and over and over again, I just tend to fall in love with Jesus over and over and over again. Because each time I look at the love letter that he has given us, 
Holy Spirit reveals something more to me, something as a random word just for me that tends to lift my spirits and lift my souls and just remind me why the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Jesus calls this abiding in him. Just as Jesus taught his disciples, he tells us the same in John 15 and 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him or her bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Abiding in Jesus is the key to bearing the fruit in every area of our lives. We really don't need more of God, like we always say, I need more of you, God. We really don't need more of God. We already have the Lord living inside of us. But what we need is less of ourselves. And we, we prioritize our time. We spend time with God in the secret place. And let me tell you what happens then. When we see that the things being sanctif sanctifying, proce the sanctifying process of dealing with our flesh, we will see that when we draw closer to God, when we spend that time in his presence, that sanctifying process will be made evident because not only will we become more and more and more like him, we will realize that, but even others around us will realize that, that we are more like the Lord, which will draw them to him. And my friends, we at Trinity Church, we truly believe in drawing others to God. That's why we are so keen on activating faith for the harvest and activating prayer for the harvest, for the laborers and for the holding, which, which is the church, and for their evangelistic efforts to also activate movement for the harvest. Multiple times during the year, you know we do this. As a church family, we fast, we pray, we have missions locally and abroad because the harvest is plentiful and yet the laborers are few. This is another reason why we should prioritize in our busy schedules time to be in the presence of the Lord, time with, in prayer with him, time studying his word, just abiding in Jesus. Because we are called to go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to every creation. And that is why we as believers have to remain in the presence of God. And the more we include God in every area of our lives, our hearts are tuned in towards the Lord and we will have a stronger understanding of the Lord's presence within us. You know, God often tugs my heart to make me spend time with him in a slower, unrushed priority. And when I listen and slow down to make time with him my highest priority, let me tell you what happens. He sweetly satisfies, sweetly satisfies my thirst for him. But when I'm caught up in the rat race in the business of the world, I tend to feel my thirst. I feel my hunger with other activities and, and busy work or things that I don't even need to fill myself with. And you know what that does? It causes me to feel disconnected, more disconnected, from our God, especially lately during this pandemic. I realized that in my alone time, I realized that my soul really needs to meet with him. My soul needs to be in continual prayer mode. My soul needs to take refuge in God and God alone because I sense in my heart when I'm becoming spiritually fatigued and that's when I need to turn closer to him, more intimate with in a fellowship with him because that's where I truly find joy. I truly find the peace of the Lord and I find deeper blessings, blessings that I didn't even realize that I wanted or even needed. God takes me there when I draw closer to him, especially during those times of being alone. Soaking in his presence by praying and listening to worship music, reading and meditating on his word, practicing the Bible principles, putting yourselves in the parables and the biblical stories, which is one of my personal favorites. It helps us to become sensitive to Holy Spirit's indwelling presence in our lives. And all the busyness that have consumed our time and our attention and our energy, we place all that on the physical senses, on the outward things of life. Those things will come a back seat. They will take a back seat and we will become more acutely aware of God's presence because his presence is always there. We need to remember that. God's presence is always there. 
And sometimes we just need to soak in his presence and just thank him. Just thank him for not letting us miss him because he's always there with us. And he just gives us time to just pursue him and come to him because he completely opens his doors for us. And there is no waiting. He is always available to us. And we just want the Holy Spirit to just be honored as we go in his presence. We need to remember that fellowship with God happens 24 seven on the plains of the heavenly realms. Whether we are conscious of it or not, whether we understand it or not, whether we are aware of our fellowshipping with God, we are fellowshipping with him. I love what Paul exhorts us to do in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, when it says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And that does not mean to literally, continually mumble prayers aloud all day. Rather, it means for whatever moment we can fill with prayer, fill with prayer. It means that we are to be in a constant state of prayer within our minds and in our hearts. I love in the book I was reading, No Limits, No Boundaries. I like how the author puts it, and I would like to share that with you on, in, uh, in one of the readings here. It's just something nice that she, she put here. And just to kind of remind us how it is to pray continually and pray without ceasing. And it says, Throughout the entire day, in every situation we're involved in, we maintain an awareness of God's presence and ask quietly for his help, his direction, and his equipping. Remaining open to his voice and leading, we feel the presence and direction of God. We keep ourselves in a continual spirit of gratitude towards him with God's passion in using our lives and his spirit and dwelling our spirits, we converse with him during the course of the day. We give the Lord the ongoing opportunity to lead us and to direct us and to speak to us. If we encounter a challenge, we bring it to the Lord and conquer it with his word. Over time, this state of constant prayerfulness becomes as natural as breathing. As natural as breathing. Communion with God is constant. Right now, as you're sitting here watching this, Holy Spirit is taking the word, the truth, and the things that natural man cannot receive, and he is imparting that truth into you, and you're fellowshipping with God even right now. Even if you have not studied, even if you have not prayed as you should, even if you've committed sin and you're feeling guilty, even if you have not attended church recently because of the pandemic, Scripture says that God is faithful even when we are not, for he cannot deny who he is is. That is the grace of God. That is the mercy of God. In your spirit, these conversations are happening right now. Even though you may not be making time and spending time with God in prayer of priority, in the spirit realm, you have been justified. That happened when you put your faith in Jesus. You are counted righteous. You have an immediate standing with God. You are being sanctified because we are not perfect, but we are being perfected. And as believers, you need to really understand this because when you're praying to God, it's not about begging God to hear you. It's about believing that God already hears you. It's not about begging God to accept you, but it's about believing that you are already a child of God. It's not about asking God for forgiveness, but it's about believing that he has forgiven you. Psalm 103 says, God does not deal with us according to our sin, nor repay us according to our iniquities. We discussed this in lesson one in knowing our identity because that's what it takes. It takes for us to know our identity in Christ. And once you realize who you are in Christ, if you can just overcome those mindsets of guilt, those, those, those thoughts of condemnation, that fear, that skepticism, that not knowing your identity and not living in a place where you know you should live in your mind, in your heart, and believing that the truth as you know it is to be true, 
if you can just come out of all of that that the enemy has tried to put all this misinformation into you if you can just ward that off then and only then can you only truly enjoy the 24 7 fellowship that we have with the lord who is always with us whether we're washing dishes whether we're chauffeuring our kids to school or to soccer practice whether we're working on our jobs or preparing a meal or attending church function or even while we're sleeping whatever we're doing just know that we are in fellowship with our god hallelujah we may not always have the ideal prayer time guys we may not always have hours and hours to just go before the Lord in our prayer closets and just spend countless hours before him worshiping and praying and interceding. We're to be wonderful in a perfect world because there is absolutely no experience in life that could compare to the experience of spending focused, intentional, uninterrupted quality time with our Lord in worship praise and in prayer oh gosh but in reality most of us just even find it difficult to set aside one hour on a daily basis to just pray and go before the lord and just pour our hearts out to him but that doesn't mean that you and i cannot have fruitful prayer lives because sometimes it's not just feasible for us to be able to just go and pour out our whole hearts for hours travailing before the lord but sometimes we have to do what I call streamlined prayers, those 10 to 15 minute prayers. And they still give us full access to our Father because what counts is the sincerity of heart, the sincerity of our hearts, because we serve a relational God who wants to hear from us. He wants us to set time aside for him because he has availed himself fully and completely to us. He is with us because of his omnipresence. And we talked about last week about God completely having his door open for us and completely being able to give us full access to him. When friends have turned their backs on you, when husband or wives are nowhere to be found and are sleeping or working or taking care of the affairs of their own lives, when your children are busy doing their things, just know that God is always there to listen to you, to guide you, to protect you, to be there for you. He is there because he cares for us and he wants us to come casting all of our cares on him because he does truly truly care for us in the book i love this part and the author speaks about prayer on the go <laughs> prayer on the go that means praying in your prayer closets that means praying in your cars you have a prayer shower you have a prayer gym you have a prayer grocery store you pray in every opportunity you get she focuses on how prayer should be a part of your daily existence she says that God can accomplish more during five minutes, five minutes of prayer than we can accomplish in 50 hours of labor. And I wanna share this. It says, think of your prayer time, not as an activity that depletes your time and efforts, but as an activity that supernaturally enhances your time and multiplies your efforts. Remember, prayer is a divine exchange. We trade our natural strength and our resources and our abilities and, in effect, and our effectiveness for the limitless power equipping, helping, and giving us resources. As we invest our time in prayer, he multiplies our time back to us. God multiplies our time back to us. Even in the small things, he multiplies that time back to us. For instance, it may not be a line at the grocery store that day, or it may not be in the traffic, and you can coast right into your job, or you may be at the airport, and there is no line. He multiplies that time back to us, and I'm just telling you, I think that's a good way to invest our time, and I count that as a joy and as a good trade-off. Because even in the small things, God is listening and God is hearing us and he is availing himself to us. We can fellowship with God at all times, at all times, because God's spirit is in us. 
He is with us. He's communing with us. He's working on us. For he who begun a good work in you is faithful to complete that work. The indwelling spirit is in you. I love this. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it says, The same spirit, and I'm sure you can say this with me, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence, and we fellowship with Holy Spirit, spirit to spirit, all the time. So I encourage you to spend time in prayer, using your prayer language, because when you're praying in tongues, you are releasing into the physical realm the benefits the benefits that rest in the spiritual realm in you, in your outward expression of your lives. Prioritizing prayer is important. We have to, we may not be able to make it to every service at the church, but you can do this within the comforts of your home. You can go before the Lord. You can fall prostrate on your face, get down on your knees, put on some worship music just to bring in your minds from the rat race of the world and just go before our Savior and just pour your heart out to him and listen to him. Trust in him because he wants to commune with us. He's availing himself with us and to us. I love the fact that we can prioritize our time with God by setting an appointment. You know, setting an appointment, putting in a, a time that you intentionally set aside an appointed hour of prayer. This is a designated time that. You can just, the first thing in the morning, some people like to get up early in the morning and get their prayer time in before they go and, and face the issues and the, the concerns and affairs and the duties of life. And some may choose the evening time or at midday to have your prayer time with the Lord. But that's, this is a time that you choose to focus completely on the Lord and his word through prayer. This is a time that you have made a determined effort to communicate with him and with all of his promises. This time when you want to worship and engage in spiritual warfare to bind the power of the enemy and to release the power of God in your life and over the life of our community and your family and our nation. And I just want to give you a few scriptures that are examples of that appointed time of prayer. And, and you may want to grab your Bibles. You can find a couple of these with me if you'd like to read along. Uh, one of them is in 1 Samuel, and a real quick, quick, just one-liner. In 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 19, in case you want to go and look early uh, later on, it says, they, meaning Hannah, um, the mother of Samuel, and her husband, Elkanah, rose up early morning and worshiped before the Lord. Here's another, Psalm 5 and 3. And it says, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. In Psalm 59, 16, write these down now, it says, I will sing of thy power. Yes, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Psalm 63 is a quick one that says, O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. And the last one, Mark chapter 1, 35, and it says, very early in the morning, when it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I love this. The psalmist says, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. You guys need to know that God is alert and he is attentive to hear our heartfelt prayers that he is actively working to bring them to pass. And when we start and end our day with the Lord, we cannot help but to walk in victory throughout the entire day. 
I just love that. Through victory throughout the entire day. And a song that comes to my mind when I think about that, I was thinking of this the other day. Um, what is that song? I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. You guys remember that song? It just comes to mind that we need God every hour, every day, every moment of our lives. And when I think about those words, I think the more time we spend with God, the more beautiful the cultivation of his spirit is. The more we are aware of his presence and the more we will experience more time with him because we will have a greater realization of his presence when we're driving in our car, when we're sitting in a in the, in, in, on our jobs, when we're performing our chores, when we're hanging out with our friends, we will have a greater awareness of his presence. So we will have more of God that so many of us pray for because we will have a greater recognition of his presence. And let me tell you, when you come in his presence more often, and when you take that time to spend and prioritize your schedules to, to include God and to, to make your whole life revolve around him and his presence, you will become more Christ-like in your character, in your conduct, in your conversations. And you will get to a point in life that you will just long and excitedly to, to enter into talking with him on a regular basis and to hear from him in that beautiful cultivation of the spirit. When it comes into your life, you will want to do nothing without God. You will seek him in all things and everything. You will go before him with prayer and supplication, making every request be known to God. You will do that when you set that beautiful cultivation of Holy Spirit in your lives in time with God as a priority. You will begin to walk in it. You will begin to realize that the constant prayerfulness is a natural, as natural, as taking a breath. Can we just do that right now? Just take a breath and just think of how our Father has his arms outstretched to us so that we can come into his presence at any time. And he is a God, a relational God, that wants us to just come and adore him and just worship him and give him all praise and all glory. Because in his presence, is the fullness of joy. And his right hand pleasures for evermore. Just take this time to breathe. Breathe. Um, as I just close with Deuteronomy 33 and 12. And it says, let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. Just think of the imagery of a, a daughter or a son on a father's back, enjoying that time. With her, with her father. And that's just what God wants us to do as we rest between his shoulders where we can safely abide. Let us pray. Father, breathe on us. Breathe into our lives and blow into our areas where we just seek your guidance and your, your promises of peace, O oh Lord. We desire that personal, intimate communion with you, God, as we just long to be in your presence, to have a greater awareness of you. Father, we ask that you just cause a shift 
in our mindsets as we set our minds on things above and not on earthly things. Father, let us fill our minds on, on things that are lovely, things that are uh, pure, things that are true, things that are, are honest, things that are of good report. Let us focus our minds on things that are praiseworthy as we long to be in your presence, Father. And we're so grateful that you continuously welcome us into your presence. We will not be distracted by the wiles of the enemy, but we will keep our focus on you, God. As we gird ourselves with the armor, the full armor of God, we will be sure to give you praise and glory and honor because you are our all and all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. God bless you and thank you for your time for this week's lesson. And next week, we will talk about <laughs> trusting the promise maker. And speaking of promises that God has for us, trusting in the promise maker. May God bless you and may God keep you. See you guys on next week. Thank you.